It's too expensive. It's so complicated. It's never going to look natural. Now, these are just some of the common misconceptions about using artificial lighting for food photography. So in today's video, I basically want to bust some of these myths that are floating around about artificial lighting, because honestly, it was a game changer for my photos and for my career and the money I was making. And I want it to be the same for you. So let's go bust some myths. Okay, the first misconception that photographers have about using artificial lighting is it's not going to look natural. It's gonna look artificial, it's gonna look ugly. Now, I'm actually going to do a little bit of an experiment with you. So, I'm gonna show you a series of three photos and I want you to pick which of these three photos was shot with artificial lighting. So, photo number one, photo number two, or photo number three. Two of these have been shot with natural light, one of them with artificial light. So, out of these three photos, which one do you think has been shot with artificial light? Now, feel free to jump into the comments and say photo one, photo two, or photo three, whichever of the three that you think has been shot with artificial lighting. And also pop into the comments the reason why you think that this has been shot with artificial light. Now, before I give you the answer, I did the exact same experiment with my Instagram following. And I asked them exactly the same question. I showed them all three photos, and then I asked which of the three they thought was shot with artificial light. And here are the results from Instagram. So based on these results from Insta, let me tell you that the actual photo that was shot with artificial light was photo number one. Now, did you get that right? Were you correct? Were you able to guess which of these three images was taken with artificial light? Now, if you were right, brilliant, well and good. And if you were wrong, that's great too, because that just goes to prove that it's very difficult to tell from the final result if an image was shot with artificial light or with natural daylight, provided you know what you're doing, provided you know the physics of light and how to control and manipulate light using artificial lighting. And really the results from Instagram are pretty much the same across the board. You can see from the screen, it was quite difficult for my community to actually tell which of the three photos was actually taken with artificial lighting. So regardless of whether you got this question correct or not, you've got to admit that all three images are very similar when it comes to the lighting. And that is the whole point of this experiment. More than getting the answer correct, I'm sure it took you a while to notice any discernible difference between the lighting and the photos. And I hope this little mini experiment goes to show you and to prove to you that if you know how to use your artificial lights correctly, if you know how to place them, what modifier you need to use based on the light you want to recreate, as well as how to manipulate the light, then making artificial lighting look natural is a piece of cake. So whether you're into dark moody lighting, whether you're a fan of light and airy, or even hard lighting, all of these can look absolutely natural, even when taken with artificial lights. So now if somebody comes to you and says natural is best, which was my slogan and motto for the longest time, probably the first three years of my career, then usually this is an excuse and it's more to do with, I don't know how to use and manipulate artificial lighting more than anything else. Now I know this because for the longest time, I was exactly the same. I would tell potential clients that I only use natural light and that is the best for food photography when really, that wasn't my true belief, but I just didn't know how to use it. And if that's something you've been saying to yourself as well, take this as a sign that you need to start learning how to use artificial light. Okay, let's bust another myth. And this one is one of the most common myths when it comes to artificial lighting and that it's too expensive. Now look, I'm gonna be straight with you. If you want to start using artificial lighting, it's not free. You're gonna have to buy some equipment. And at the bare minimum, that includes a stand, a light and a modifier, or perhaps you don't even need a modifier actually, but bare minimum, okay? It doesn't have to be expensive though. So let's look at a really cheap setup that is perfect for food photography that costs just $200. So first up, you're gonna need your actual flash or a light. And this is a speed light that does all the basics and costs just $70. Next, you're gonna need a trigger. So you can actually connect your flash unit to your camera. And this is a trigger that I use from Godox that costs 
Then you're also going to need a light stand. And this one by Neewer costs $32. Now, if you want to hoist up your speed light onto the stand, then you're gonna need a mount or a bracket. And one of the cheapest mounts that I could find was this one that costs a mere $10. Now, this mount also has an opening to attach your modifier, okay? So, in this case, one of the cheapest modifiers on the market would be an umbrella modifier. And this particular one is 43 inches, so the perfect size for food photography and costs just $20. And then you're going to need some AA batteries to get this whole package going. So, the grand total for this complete basic package is $201. So does it cost money? Yes, it does. Is it expensive to get started? In my humble opinion, no. Especially when you realize what the returns are when you start using it. Now, everything that I just mentioned right now has been listed in the description box below. But this package is not going to be ideal for every single photographer. So if you really want to go deeper into what light is right for you based on what your needs are, what your goals are as a food photographer, based on the amount of space you have to work with, based on the type of work you do as well as your budget, then make sure you sign up to my free masterclass where we will be covering this exact same topic. So by the end of this class, you'll know exactly what light you need, including links on what to purchase. I'm going to share with you my blueprint on how to master artificial lighting for food photography guaranteed in less than 30 days. So no more YouTubing, no more Googling. And I'll also be covering how to make your photos look as natural as possible when taken with artificial lighting. So the link to that class is in the description box below. Okay, let's bust another myth. Artificial lighting is complicated. Well, I'm here to tell you it is not. Now, you may feel like this if you're new to this and you don't have someone showing you the ropes, but I like to break it down into three steps. First, you need to know what gear to buy. There's a ton of equipment available on the market, so you can really go down a rabbit hole when it comes to lights and modifiers and triggers. So you just need to narrow down what's right for you based on your needs. So that's the first step. Now, once you get your equipment, you need to figure out what do all these buttons mean? How do I set it up? So once you know how to set up your lights, it's actually a really easy rinse and repeat system. Dare I say, it's actually like switching on your overhead lights and I'm not even kidding. So just to recap, number one is getting your equipment. Number two is setting it up and knowing how to use it. And then step three, finally, when everything has been set up, you now need to learn how to manipulate this light to achieve what you want. And this could be the hard part because this is where you actually have to put your thinking caps on and figure out what kind of light do you want to recreate, what modifier would be best suited to actually recreate that light, and then how do I make changes and manipulate the light using laws of physics when I'm on set. So if you can master these three steps, number one, get your gear, number two, set it up, number three, start manipulating, then you can be an artificial lighting master. Now, I'm sure the first time you picked up the camera or even your iPhone or a Mac for that matter, all the buttons gave you a scare and it was probably quite hard to take that first photo even. But just like a camera has a bazillion buttons on there, half of which we don't even use as a boot photographer, the same is also very true for your lights. And lucky for you, it actually has less buttons than your camera. So if you can figure out how to use a camera, you can figure out how to use lights. In fact, if tech is something that scares you, then you can actually get started off with something like continuous lights, which are a great option because continuous lights work exactly the same as a window. The only setting you need to worry about on your continuous lights is actually the power of the lights. And so working with continuous lights is actually very similar to working with a window and just some sunlight coming through your camera settings are gonna be exactly the same. And you're gonna also adjust your camera settings in exactly the same way you did as when you're using natural light. So if tech is something you're worried about, fear not, it's actually very doable, very easy. And continuous lights might be a good option as a starting point. So at this stage, I want you to jump into the comments and tell me what other myths you have about artificial lighting as I would love to bust those as well. And whether you use artificial lighting, whether you use natural lighting, if you're looking to improve your lighting as a whole, then check out my top lighting tips for food photographers in this video over here. 
I'll catch you guys next week.